uh, we're so thrilled to be able to bring you this information. And we have a guest with us today. Um, uh, our guest is someone who we have a lot of respect for. We've spent quite a bit of time together. And he has a different kind of outlook towards uh, what we're talking about now. Because he, I'm not sure how to put this, Ralph Flores, but Ralph uh, has a way of seeing a little bit, things a little bit differently than we see them. So I want to welcome you to the show, Ralph. Thank Th you, Bruce. Thank you so much for coming. And I don't quite know how to ask you questions. So I think what I'd like to do is just say, tell us a little bit about what you have seen, what you've seen maybe months or even years ago that are coming uh, to fruition right now. And what do you see happening in the next weeks, months, and years, if, if that's possible for you to share that? Um, sure. Let me backtrack a little bit. Um, let's go back to 2012, which is when we had the big shift. That was the year when people thought that we were coming to an end because the Aztec calendar finished. The Mayan calendar also had a, uh, an ending then and some other calendars around the world. Uh, what it really reflected was the end of a 26,000 year cycle that's subdivided into 5,200 year cycles uh, each. And so they are tied into also the galaxy movements and the planetary movements. It's not something that was just pulled out of the air. It's all, it all can be quantified and, and backed up. But what 2012 marked for me was a shift of energies, which means we have two basic energies. We have love, which brings all the positive emotions, happiness, joy, and what have you. And then you have the other side, which is fear, which is the dark energy, and that also carries with it the other, the negative emotions such as power, greed, anger, uh, anything that's connoted negative that brings your resistance and your vibrational level down. In the year 2012, we kind of reached a, a balancing of, let's say, if you look at a balance where they were both equal. And at that point, there was a, a shift started where the negative energy or the fear started to drop a little bit in, in contrast to love, which brings the joyful and the happiness and the higher resonance. As that has happened and as it has gotten stronger, the example that I always like to give is that if you don't want to let go of something that's always worked for you, which has always been uh, driven by fear, it's going to intensify and, the, and it's going to come in stronger uh, just to not lose that power, that grab that you have on your traditions, way of operating. I mean, when you're born, the first thing they tell you is don't do this or we're going to spank you. Then you go to school and you get reprimanded. So it's all fear, fear, fear your whole life through the schools, universities, your corporate life. You don't do your job, you're fired. They backstab you, whatever. So everything is fear driven in the past, that is slowly starting to shift. It's not a shift that goes like this or the whole world would collapse. So it has to be a gradual thing, but backtracking, as this negative force has seen that they're losing its grab on the world, so to speak, they're fighting much harder. And how do they fight much harder? By trying to instill that fear even further, by trying to get that control that they never had, and then trying to reach their ultimate objective was to have perhaps a world control which would be their end objective, which is summarized in a few people that many, most of us don't even know who they are, but we can read between the lines and say, this is what it is. So, when 2012 came around and time was were rolling on, um, and we had the elections for, uh, again in 2016, and my gut feeling, let's call it gut feeling, was telling me, in spite of everything I heard, that Trump would win. What I have to always do is, as I get these feelings, know-how, knowingness, whatever you want to call it, I have to step back and really shut myself off from the media, from the hearsay, from the negative people. I have to really pull back so that that feeling that I have stays pure. Because it's very easy to be suddenly rocked away from, oh, did I did I think this right? Did I come up with this correctly? 
so I can't really allow myself and I have to really stick strong with that premonition or that whatever I see and then let not this information influence me in one way or another because the minute it starts doing it so strong I even feel it's like oh, oh here it comes and it's like did I really think this did I really see this in the future did I? so I really have to backtrack and honor that feeling so that's the feeling I got um, when it was we were coming up to the elections about Trump and even though it was like neck and neck at that point I just sat there and, I, and people would say oh he's gonna lose he's gonna lose I said no he's not no he's not I stuck to my my belief, let's put it that way. Um, now, now we're going another step further and we have new elections coming up. Uh, my feeling and that of friends of mine and people that think alike or that have the same vibrations, way of, of tuning into things and events, uh, feel the same way. And uh, in spite of everything, I truly believe that he will be reelected. Uh, some people may think that it'll be a miracle, and so if it's a miracle, let it be called a miracle, but he, he will win. Um, it would take a, a horrendous catastrophe for that not to happen. And as I said before, you know, everything that they're throwing into the pot to try to not let that happen is fighting very hard. But I think underneath certain movements are, are raising the vibrations and creating situations that many times are going to be like little surprises. Uh, it's sort of like this starts working, there's something here waking up, this is bringing it in, this is bringing it up, and we will get there. Um, prior to 2012, I go back many decades, um, when I get a feeling that hits me very hard in this area, which is the solar plexus, it's almost like it knocks the wind out of me. It goes, I just go like, <gasps> And, I was, and that's when I see a person or whatever, and it doesn't happen very often, which is good. I, I always say, what does it mean? It means that whoever I'm interacting with on an esoteric basis, because we're not exchanging words or anything, it's just a boom, it hits me, is that there's something not right here. And usually that something not right takes about eight to ten years to, to come out with the results of that feeling, meaning the bad or the negative things that were associated with that feeling, because when it hits me here really hard, it's usually not good. But as I said, fortunately, it just happens very sporadically and whatever. So that has helped me in the past and that has helped me to go forward with certain things and then view things. And I cannot tell you how these things are going to unfold. I just know this is not good and we'll know the truth in eight or ten years. That's, that's kind of how I've been dealing with my uh, uh, seeing at the world changes and what have you. And it's, it's almost like I tell people, you got to listen to your heart and say, you know, Something doesn't sound right here, uh, but now we're in, a, we're in a, a, a time where people are very, I, it's a, as a friend of mine calls it, you know, they've drank too much Kool-Aid from the news media because it's all uh, prepared, uh, they have an agenda, they're all trying to say what to say, the, the same quote-unquote journalists, because they're not journalists, they're just people that are voicing opinions, they're not really telling the facts. Um, are just as brainwashed as, as the people under them, so it's just a chain. Now there are some puppets or some people that uh, direct the puppets that do know what they want. So they say, this is what you're going to do, this is how you're going to do it, and this is how you're going to say it. And it's all about money. So it's, it's just a matter of the dark, again, you know, this darkness falling down with the light coming up from the other side. And the way I see it, the, the light is stronger than the darkness, and that's why I see us coming out of it. I don't know when exactly. I think that it's going, there's going to be a transition time, even uh, when Trump wins, because nothing, it's not like you turn the switch on and off. There's going to be a, a, uh, a time for rebalancing things throughout not only the U.S., but the world. You know, it's, it's like a, a big sea. You, know, you get a storm, and the ship is rocking on, all over the place, and and then this, the storm is over and it's not like, oh, the water's just calm now. No, it's a, it's a matter of, you know, the waves get softer and softer and softer until we reach that peaceness or that normal travel position. So there's going to be some, a lot of uneasiness afterward. There's going to be, again, a lot of anger. A lot of people are going to be angry because they're going to start realizing that they were wrong and they're not going to like it because people don't like to be told that they're wrong. So that's, there's going to be some resistance that way. Uh, but eventually, as 
time progresses and as they see that things start working the right way and light starts coming in, they will slowly start shifting again towards that uh, peaceful, loving way of existing. Um, it will also, I do see that it will bring more people together in the sense that um, it's not even a matter of forgiveness, it's a matter of inner understanding, of finding people's truths. It's, it's, more, it's, it's, more, it's almost like an awakening for many people. Uh, there's nothing wrong with saying I was wrong. I think it takes a lot of strength to find, to say I was wrong, or I was right, it doesn't matter. It's really finding the truth within you. And I think that after this, this whole mess, we get over it, that a lot of people are going to start finding that truth more and more and more and more. It's not perfect. We live in a duality world. Uh, it's, it's a long ways where we have to go, but we are shifting that way. Okay, we have a question. Uh, Cindy has a question for you. Yes. Uh, Ralph, I wondered if you can uh, give us your feelings about uh, what's going to happen and, and what is happening with the children. How do you feel about their futures and, and, and uh, how the people are going to handle it here? And, and, um, I get the feeling that the, uh, initially it's, it's well, for, first of all, there's still a, a large group that doesn't believe in it, but as it really starts coming out more and more and more, uh, there's a cer certain films and publications that are coming out, even from Hollywood related people and other places that are kind of bringing this unbelievable story of what's happening with children throughout these decades and to the extreme that they have mistreated, to put to word it lightly, of, of these children. And I think it's really going to create a shock amongst uh, people as they really start finding out that it really did happen and is happening. That that's, that's probably going to be another thing that's going to hit them in the face and, and it's kind of going to jerk them and say, whoa, you know, we have been really fooled for so many years and whatever. So that's going to help people wake up. I also see that, um, as you said, there's do, new methods in psychology, psychiatry that are helping children connect with those bad feelings from from when they're, they're young and help them uh, release information. It's not that it really truly comes out of the cell because it's in your DNA, but it, it, it establishes a connection saying, I behave this way because this happened to me and it clicks. So it changes their behavior. Um, I also see a lot of children now, the rainbow children and the crystal children that came in before that bring with them a lot more light into this world. Uh, we don't quite see it right now because, you know, they're three, four, six years, ten years, twelve years old. But they, they are in their own way do already doing it. And they are the new generation that are going to flourish when we keep, you know, getting older and <laughs> passing on the baton, so to speak. Um, I, I think there's going to be a big awakening amongst adolescents and there's going to be, uh, I think there's going to be a a wanting to find out, you know, where, why did I become this way? Why am I this way? And they will be able to find a lot of answers going, going forward. Great. This when we look at history, and when we look at what we're, at what we're experiencing right now, certain leaders throughout the world, doesn't matter what country, what continent, doesn't matter, but uh, some leaders, they always said, how can I conquer? How can I be in control? Well, the method was, and it's still practiced, divide and conquer. That's the old method of trying to control a group, a bigger group, a country, a continent, a world. Divide and conquer. What does that mean? Divide and conquer is pitting people against each other and not giving them enough power here and not giving them enough power there. So it's always split, split, split. Can't work that way. You have to work from a loving way and say, no, we're not splitting, we have to come together. So now that we've been re-split re again and severely even within this country, we have to get out of that modus operandi and come back together. And that's where Helen says, you know, you got to get let, let go of the fear, you got to believe in yourself, you got to read through things and just live, live peaceful and not think that tomorrow I'm going to get this or tomorrow I'm going to get that. No, it's really important to live in the moment. Because the past is imagination and the future is also imagination. The only thing that you have a guarantee of is now. And that now changes by second. The one thing that we, I, I'm told time and time again by all the people that are out there teaching, the thing that we need to do is stay positive. If we can keep our energy and vibration up, 
the whole world rises. If 100,000 people get depressed, a million people get depressed, the vibe goes down, the energy level goes down. But if 100,000 people or a million people believe in the goodness of the world, and they believe that the only thing I can do is be positive and feel better, that alone is going to change things. And we talked a little bit about the election before. Uh, the way the elections have been rigged is most of the time the, the, the elections are predetermined and I think that's why so many people are very frustrated. Whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, the person that they want in there is going to get in there, the elites, but it didn't happen this time. And we're looking at what happens. Have you ever seen, by the way, uh, a media 100% against anyone? I've never seen this before. So the media, which is controlled by the elite, seem to be 100% against this one fellow. Who's that one fellow? That one fellow is our president who is doing everything in his power, everything, to change things and bring this reign, this control, out of the hands of the elite and back to the public, back to the people of the world. And back in terms of, let's say, what you mentioned before, Helen, as to where we're going to end up. And you right. mentioned... Right. <laughs> no, no, but what I want to say is that uh, as you as you see, I see it as well as ending with one government, whatever that means, whether it's purple, red, fuchsia, it doesn't matter. It's just one government, and when I say one government, that to me says it's, it's sort of like a more harmonious way of, of living, of operating. Now, how we're going to get there, that's up to you guys to figure it out, but that's what I see coming up, whether it's a little short term, a little longer term, but into one cohesive uh, and that's the direction that we're heading. It's going to be very exciting. We will be here every week, sometimes twice a week, to inform you about what's going on and what the future could possibly look like. I want to thank our guests, Helen and Ralph. Thank you so much for uh, being with us. And of course, I want to thank Cindy, uh, Cindy uh, Lindenberger. We continue to put out some, uh, I think, is exciting, informative program. So until next time, my name is Bruce Starr. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you again soon. Good night, Hi. everybody. Good night. <laughs>